Hey guys, what's up? It's Brian from the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Um, so I'm here editing this video on the new 2021 F-150 and I'm gonna call an audible here, all right? So the video is 54 minutes long and I don't think anybody wants to sit through all of that even though it's a, there's a lot to get to in this new truck. There's a lot of new features and stuff like that. So I'm gonna break it up into two separate videos so it may not flow as well, uh, but that's why it may end or end abruptly for you um, because there's a lot to get to. And you know, this, this new truck has so much new tech in it. I love the truck so far. By the way, I talk highly of the truck in this video, but I am in no way sponsored by Ford. Um, I never have been either. Um, it's just my initial thoughts on it. So. Let me know, would you rather have a 50, you know, 30, 40, 50 minute video, or would you rather me break it up into two parts like this uh, to make it kind of, you know, give you a little bit of a break. It's a lot to absorb, there's a lot of information. Let me know down in the comments and let's check it out. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Today, we're gonna take a look at the all new 2021 Ford F-150. Let's get to it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna talk about the exterior on the vehicle here, and then we'll get to the interior, uh, the underbody, under the hood, and of course, we'll go on a test drive and show you some of the driver assist features on there. So we're gonna do a walk around. Now, not all of these features apply to all the models, of course. This is a platinum model. It's around $72,000 plus tax, so there's a lot of extras on it uh, that will not apply to the lower XLT models and below, all right? So let's keep that in mind. So first thing you'll notice when you look at the, this vehicle, looking at it from the front here, is that it, the front end is a much better uh, look to it, much improved, okay? Uh, 15 through 17 were pretty nice. I figure around 18 through 20 with the grill changes and stuff like that, uh, I could not stand the way the front end looked on there. This is a much meaner look with the stacked headlights and stuff like that. Uh, I've liked these stacked headlights since the 08 through 10 Super Duties when they brought them to the Super Duty, and they're bringing them now to the F-150. I think they look absolutely beautiful. It's a really manly look in the front end here, which it should be. It's an F-150. Uh, it's made to do work and get out there, be a man's man's truck, right? So, of course, everything in the front end now is LED. Everything in the front end here is LED. So that's really nice. Everything going down the road, I've tested it out already. It's nice and bright, much improved. Uh, looking at the front here, the hood, the hood has an awesome uh, design to it. It's not just a standard hood going across. There's a lot of uh, divots in it and peaks and valleys and stuff like that. And it gives that almost that cowl look to it where it has that cowl raised section in the center there for the engine. So I think that it looks great on there. So looking at the front here, there's a lot of tech involved starting in the front. Of course, like I said, we have LED lamps on there, so nice and bright. These ones actually had the projector beams on, so they actually follow you through the turns and give you that better uh, view around the turns with the proper light for deer and stuff like that. Uh, of course, we have active grill shutters in the front here, front-facing camera, and there's even an active air dam down below, which we'll talk about once we get to the underside of the vehicle. One really cool feature, and they were really thinking here, is whenever you hit the washers on the, the, to clean the windshield, it'll actually come out, stick out of there, pop out, and it'll spray your front-facing camera on, which is very important. Imagine, summertime, all the bugs and muck and everything else hitting that thing, and it's pretty important for it to work for a lot of different driver assist reasons, so um, you want to make sure it's clean. We'll see how well that works in the real world with you know, bugs and all that stuff stuck. To, but it's a pretty cool feature. They were definitely thinking. Too bad, though, they did not incorporate the same feature on the rear, which we all know everything gets kind of rolled and thrown up in the back there, and the back camera, reverse camera, gets dirty really fast, and there's no cleaner back there, which I think they missed out on. So walking around the front here, pull back a little bit. I mean, it has a really nice stance to it. What do you guys think, right, compared to the older models? This is why I waited to buy my new F-150, all right? I definitely waited and got it at the right time. 
So looking down the side of the vehicle here, it's a much cleaner look. Everything's more integrated going down the side here. Everything just kind of fits together. It does have the uh, bright appearance package for the chrome belt line molding on there. Uh, the big improvement I feel that distinguishes it from the older models is the fender flare here. A lot of people don't like it, some people do. I think it looks great on there. And of course, uh, the vent on here, as far as I can tell, I looked through there, uh, it is functional. So it does allow air to pass through the engine and out the side here to help cool the engine compartment down on there. All right, so the mirrors. The mirrors, of course, have a lot of tech built into them. They're pretty standard uh, mirrors on here. They're not necessarily tow mirrors in this particular package, um, but they had the bliss system, of course, integrated, just like any bliss system. And then they had these spotlights in the side here, which I'm not sure they had on the uh, previous generation, but man, these are LED, of course, uh, and they're ultra bright, and that's part of the zone lighting system they offer on these vehicles. So when you turn these on, and you could turn them on individually side to side, they put out a ton of lights, like almost like a spotlight because of the LEDs inside of there. Of course, it has the cameras down below there in, in the mirror uh, for the 360 camera system that's on the vehicle here. So, of course, this being a platinum model, it has the power running boards on here. You open the doors, and it'll, of course, pop out. But they also incorporate a little kick switch down here. So I'll attempt to do it. You just kind of kick the switch, and it'll pop out, which is nice in case you don't want to open the doors to... Uh, pop the running boards out and also they extended them down further past the cab here over here so you can get up in here and maybe you know clean the bed or something like that and get in the bed you have a little step built right into the main running board so they're definitely thinking there all right so of course the fuel door is a little bit wider uh compared to what you're probably used to um and that's because these vehicles also have the optional 3.0 liter um uh, power stroke engine. So of course they need a spot for the def filler right here. So that's why the door is wider on those. Otherwise, easy fuel system. And they have a nice dust seal on it finally to make sure we keep all the debris out for the easy fuel in there. So we can no EVAP codes. Everything back here looks pretty darn standard, all right? We get back to the tail lamps on here. So you guys saw 15 through uh, 20. The tail lamps have that really aggressive kind of look back here. Some people liked them, some people didn't. Well, apparently a lot of people through research did not like them, and they wanted them gone. So as you can see here, it has this wingtip-like look here. All LED, of course. Uh, but they remind me of the 09 through 14 models. that kind of brought that same design back and upgraded it for an all LED look on there. Now, you see this dark section right here. That's part of the bliss system, the radar on the back side, both sides, uh, that de detects for the bliss system back there. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the tailgate. And there's a lot of tech built into the tailgate, as you can imagine, because this is the truck's made to work. It's it, ideally you know, XLT models and below, they're gonna be out there in the workforce and they're gonna be utilized to actually do work on the job site. So we're gonna hand the camera off here and we're gonna show a couple features with the tailgate and stuff like that. Now it's time to talk about the back end of the vehicle, the business end of the vehicle where all the work happens. So there's a lot of technology built into this tailgate on here. There's even a module that controls it all. But first I wanna talk about the rear applique on here. I think it's a much improved design. It's a full-on box design that covers the entire tailgate on there. Full rectangular design. Now this reminds me of the previous generation F-150s years ago I'm talking about. Uh, whereas the last generation F-150, they came in past the F-150 logo, notched up, went across, and then they notched back down for the Ford logo. I could not stand that design. It was hideous in my opinion. I know first world problems, but it really turned me off. Now, onto the technology of the lift gate, uh, the tailgate itself. So, this tailgate has its own module, like I said. It is full power coming down, full power going up, okay? It has a reverse camera built into it, not only for backing up the truck, which is pretty standard nowadays, uh, but is also used for the pro trailer assist system to actually help you guide your trailer and back it up straight. This right here is a spotlight, LED spotlight, which actually projects light down right here so you can work on stuff on the ground and it's part of the zone lighting system on here. Coming down to the connections by the license plate, this one right here, of course, is your standard lock for your, your, your uh, spare tire. It's pretty standard for many years now. Uh, whereas over here is your standard seven pin trailer connector 
Nothing fancy about that. Now there's no four pin option on here, so they do include an adapter for the seven to four pin in case you're hauling a smaller trailer. Of course, the lights back here, even the license plate lamps are LED, so everything's nice, bright, and white. Now, onto this connection right here. It looks different, right? It's the first time I'm seeing one. This connection right here is actually for a yaw sensor uh, connection that goes to your trailer to help you with the trailer backup assist and all that good stuff. So that needs to be calibrated, and that's part of that system on there. These, of course, are your standard proximity sensors. Nothing fancy there. So let's go ahead and try the tailgate out on here. So this tailgate, like I said, is really fancy. So it has a power lift gate, simple button inside of here comes down by itself and you can see my bed is packed I'm using it as a regular work truck um, so going back up it can be a little hard to get underneath here to find that button to go back up but you can also either just pop it back up use your key or you can use your knee so you can use your knee like this so your hands are full of stuff and you're carrying something and it'll actually react and engage and lock it for you all right let's go back down and talk about a few functions of the tailgate here. So, of course, nowadays everything is standard with these steps that are built in like this. You guys have seen this before. Step, pull, help you up into the, into the tailgate, into the bed of the truck. And same thing going back down, nice and simple. This has been out for years. Nothing fancy about that. What's cool though is all the features they built into this tailgate. See, so look across it here. They actually put a ruler built into the molding of the tailgate here, which is nice because they're, they're, they designed it so that you can put a 2x4, 2x6, something like that, right here, and actually clamp down the C-clamp, a wood clamp, right through here, and clamp down your wood so you can use a skill saw over here and hold it steady, okay? So you can concentrate on cutting it straight while the board is actually being held. Nice, nice feature. Very simple, but it's a nice feature. Now over here, standard cup holder right here, and they have some grooves right here for your, you know, screws and stuff like that, or your pencils. And then you also have a little holder here for your iPad or your phone, and you could put stuff on there, you know, either this way, or they had a, it's designed to go this way, or I guess you could even go like that at an angle back further like that. So they put a lot of thought into the tailgate, and what's nice is if you actually use this, and this gets scuffed up and you can't read the letters anymore. You simply unbolt it, pop in a new one, and you're good to go. But I'm hoping this will last for a long, long time. Now, the new feature that I haven't seen before, maybe it was in the previous generation F-150s, I did not own one, is there's actually tie-down strap holders right here and on the other side for cargo in case it comes out. You say you have a, a load of wood that came past here. You strapped it in there, but it's always nice to get the extra strapping back here so it's not slide out on you. They're also designed to be used as a bottle opener, so you can pop your bottle in here and pop, uh, open your, you know, beer or, or Coke or Pepsi or whatever, and have a drink on the tailgate here. Now, the other big uh, feature with uh, these newer trucks is the built-in generators, okay? They're actually inverters, big inverters, and we'll turn on the, the lighting inside of here, which is pretty much standard nowadays. Turn it on. I got to turn the truck back on. Only works when the key is on. <clears throat> there we go. Have our lighting for our bed here. But right here is our inverter. So there's a 2 kilowatt version, a 2.4, and a 7.2, I believe. And that 7.2 uses uh, these connections over here for a 230 outlet and stuff like that. And multiple outlets over here. Uh, once the truck is running, you can turn it on back here. And it'll actually increase the idle of the truck. Supplies, so it supplies more voltage to the inverters. So they can come back here and supply. So it's regular 20 amp outlets back here. Yeah, these are 20 amp outlets, right? And then, of course, you have your other outlets right here. It's a great feature that a lot of people are using. What's nice is even mine, the 2 kilowatt version, will run a chop saw and stuff like that back here, air compressors, stuff like that. So you can really still use even the base version of the inverter to get the work done. All right. Let's go ahead and turn these lights off. And then, sure, why not? Let's try the controller. Now, when you use uh, the remote, of course, it's going to beep. I think the beep's going down and up just to alert anybody that's not, uh, that's around it that's actually moving. 
You know, if you're doing it manually, then of course you're right here, you know you're closing, you're opening it, uh, but otherwise. So come back around the side of the vehicle, there's not much to really talk about, chrome exhaust tip, it's all pretty standard. I have the basic polished wheels on mine. Uh, nothing else really to talk about on here too much. Uh, next, we're going to get into the engine compartment. There's a lot of changes for this model year. There's a lot of carryover engines, uh, but they made a lot of changes mainly for emissions reductions. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Real quick, let's take a look under the hood to see what has changed compared to the previous generation F-150s. So just about all the engines are carryover engines with one exception, all right? So the 2.7 liter EcoBoost is back, the 3.3 liter Duratec, 3.5 liter EcoBoost as you see here, 5.0 liter Coyote engine, 3.0 liter uh, power stroke engine, and the only new offering is a 3.5 liter power boost option, which is basically a 3.5 liter EcoBoost made it up in the, with an electric motor to give you increased horsepower, torque, and of course MPGs, up to 700 miles per tank according to Ford. With that power boost option, because it is a hybrid setup, you have the increased size for the generators, the inverters on board. So that with the power boost, you can get a 2.4 kilowatt or a 7.2 kilowatt option for onboard generator for power in the bed of the truck, which is going to be great for a lot of contractors out there. Going to a job site, you're starting to do framing, stuff like that. There's nothing on site. Now you have power. You have plenty of power on site, so that's great. Now, all these engines, like I said, are carryovers with small, minor improvements, and they're all mated to the 10-speed transmission now. There's no more 6-speed option out there uh, available. So no matter what engine you choose, you're stuck with the 10-speed, which a lot of people don't like because of a lot of noise issues and uh, clunking issues, shifting, a lot of shift hunting going on. With mine, so far, it, the software, it's been great. Um, uh, it only has about 500 miles on it, uh, but so far, mine's been shifting great without shift hunting or anything like that on there. So the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is still king. Even with the, the power boost having more power and torque, uh, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost is still king when it comes to towing. Check it out. So you look at the towing chart right here, and I'll zoom in real quick, and you can see here's the power ratings for each one of the uh, engines here and torque ratings. You can see the EcoBoost has a, a good size jump in power up to 400 foot-pounds, 400 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque, which is a huge jump. Uh, the 5.0 jumped a little bit, and you can see the power boost is even, has even more power, yet cannot tow as much. All right, see, so check it out. So the EcoBoost is still king. All right, 14,000 pounds. Next is the 5.0, of course, and then it goes down from there to the power boost and the diesel and all that. But look at that. So the basic EcoBoost is still king of the hill when it comes to towing and power on there in reality. All right. So with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost, because I have the engine here, I can show you a couple of things on it. The biggest thing I notice is that just like previous generations with the start, stop and all that, there's a lot more hoses involved. I mean, you can't even see the front cover. I mean, look at that. Of course, there's the auxiliary pump right there for the start, stop. There's a lot of extra items on here uh, for emissions reasons. I mean, look at this mess over here of harnesses and wiring and tubes and all that. Let me pull this up. So this is the first year uh, that I know of that the 3.5 has an EGR set up on here. So for years, they got rid of it by using the VCT system. Uh, but now with emissions getting more and more strict, not only do we have an EGR valve and a pipe like the old days. Wow, we're going back in time here. Uh, but we also have an EGR cooler. You see that big old box right there? Well, Ford and EGR coolers on any engine, just they just don't seem to mix. Uh, and eventually they burst and they start puffing a bunch of white smoke out the back on there. The one interesting feature uh, that I noticed on here is that all the 2021 models uh, now have the yellow PO coolant, all right? So, which is good because the PO coolant is really, really good coolant. Uh, Ford used it for many years. Uh, they used the Mazda PO coolant and that stuff. I've opened up engines, Mazda CX-9, stuff like that, water pump jobs, and the inside's like brand new. This PO coolant is great. 
The other new feature I saw, I noticed on my truck here, is this monstrosity. So here's, here's the master cylinder reservoir. Uh, tucked down in there somewhere is the master cylinder. And then also strapped to it is the ABS HCU and ECU. You can see it right there. Not only that, but it's also paired up with an electronic brake booster back in there. You have an accumulator and motor for that. So this whole thing is serviced as a unit, and it costs $2,000. And that's now. That's, that's warranty pricing right now, high volume pricing. Imagine what these are going to cost once these vehicles get a little bit older and the volume starts going down, you know. Not to mention, you have to buy it all together, and there's programming and all that other stuff. I mean, what happened to the days when these things were, you know, $60 to $100 for a master cylinder? I mean, it's just now you got to buy it all together. Big, big bucks. Now, the 5.0. The 5.0, we all know the 18 through 20s were an absolute nightmare with all the changes they made to the, the cylinder linings and stuff like that. Oil burning, scoring, they're just an absolute nightmare. If you don't know it already, 18 through 20. 5.0s and a Mustang and the F-150s are a nightmare. Do not ever buy one or consider buying one, all right? So for 21, they did some design changes to it, and hopefully they fixed those issues we talked about for 18 through 20. Uh, but the other items that they changed, now they are using a belt-driven oil pump, and look at the cost of that oil pump. Whoo! Oil pumps used to be $65, $45 sometimes on some of these engines, 600 some dollars. So using a belt-driven oil pump that looks a little something like this, so you can see it looks like a regular timing belt and a cog down here and over here on the crank. And there's that monstrosity oil pump right there. So we'll see uh, how long these last and if they start developing problems with belts breaking and stuff like that. Uh, they've been using a belt-driven setup like this in a 2.7 liter Eco since 18. And I personally have not heard any problems, but who knows how it's going to be in the long term. You don't want that sucker snapping on there. So also with the 5.0 liter, uh, the, this is the first year for the 5.0 liter that they're using cylinder deactivation like GM has been using for years. And we all know about GM and all the problems they've had with that over the years, destroying the engines basically. Uh, so we'll see Ford's waited a, long, Ford waited a long, long time to incorporate cylinder deactivation in the 5.0. Uh, so we'll see how well that one does, uh, that does also in the long term. Uh, compared to the GM software on there and how they incorporate that into there. Uh, but those are the big changes for the engine compartment on here. I mean, you can see it's a huge mess, minor improvements here and there, some technology changes, mainly probably for uh, the CAFE standards, you know. Uh, and then, of course, they had that hybrid option, which can help a lot of contractors out there. It's a nice option. After all, this is a work truck, right? All right, now it's time to take a look underneath the vehicle and check out what's new. Now, there's no official new model training on these vehicles just yet. It's too darn new. Uh, but I'm just going to walk around and point out a couple of differences that I noted uh, compared to the previous generation F-150s. So starting up front here, of course, we still have active grill shutters. Okay, no big deal. They help with uh, uh, fuel economy and warm-up time of the engine. But on these new models, I noticed there's an active air dam now on the front. And the way it works is it has two motors, one on each side, uh, that are synchronized. And it'll actually lower the air dam in the front for aerodynamic efficiency going down the road. Once you hit higher speeds, it reduces drag on the vehicle. All right. Also, I noted up front here is that it's way open up here. Uh, probably because of the active air dam, um, there's no more covering right here to direct airflow through the engine on there. It's pretty interesting. Um, so it's all open up in here. And you can see there's big old boots on there for the intercoolers. Okay, the two tubes on there. It's stuck to the frame here. And over here is a big old outlet of the charger cooler heading up to uh, the throttle body, of course, for induction into the engine there. I think it's absolutely huge that, of course, the blow-off valve is in the same location. All right. Looking up inside of here, it's pretty basic. You know, it looks a little more crowded because there's a couple more cool lines and stuff like that up inside of here. But otherwise, no big deal. All right. Uh, you can see there is no longer any kind of stretch belt, nothing like that up inside of here. 
And these big old coolant lines right here, well, these heater hose looking lines right here, they're coming down to this coolant control valve. Uh, those are actually coolant lines that are going to the trans. Uh, we'll talk about that later on. That helps it warm up faster and of course cool it down. Over here on the wheel ends, okay, I noticed that the standard IWE is no longer there. It's totally different now. It's black painted um, and it has what looks like a, a motor up here, electrical cable right here, and a motor, and it looks like a vacuum line, but it's not a vacuum line. It's just a vent line that heads up and vents the IWE so it can both uh, expand and compress in here. What this actually is, is a standard IWE, like they've had for years, 04 to 20, I mean forever, they had a vacuum operated system that was very troublesome, okay? So troublesome that actually in the last few years, uh, they disabled it and cut them on for about five miles um, to uh, avoid any kind of ratcheting or grinding noises from these partially engaging, okay? Um, it's just a re been a real problem since 04. So now they've gone to this new style where it actually uses a DC motor and a sensor to check position the IWE in there. And it uses a DC motor instead to actuate and move uh, that, uh, that ring inside of there to actually engage or disengage the 4x4. So it's a little bit different now when the vehicle's off right now as it is. Uh, the front wheels are totally disconnected, which is interesting. So that's the way it should be uh, because it's all electric now. Before, when the vehicle is off and there's no vacuum applied to it, of course, the wheel and the CV axle would be connected. It's a little bit different now. Hopefully, these are good new design and they actually work and fix that, that age-old problem. The steering gear on here, it's totally different, all right? It's much more compact and it's out of the way now. Before it was over here, there's this big monstrosity right here, okay? Uh, and now it's over here. The module part of it is facing this way, perpendicular to the motor part of it right here, okay? Everything else, wiring, everything looks to be standard. On these vehicles, uh, you know, the ones that are not, uh, you, know, you know, standard F-150s, regular 88 front axle like they've had forever. Tried and true, we're all reliable, okay? Uh, the control arms look pretty darn standard on here. It's nice to see the knuckles are all aluminum on here. Uh, the sway bar, I noticed sway bar, the links in the bar itself is actually pretty scrawny. Uh, but that could be because they changed over to a different alloy metal and they don't need the big thick bar on there. Remember, they're always trying to reduce weights uh, you know, with the body being aluminum and all that stuff, they're trying to reduce weight so they can get their fuel economy numbers up. So this is probably part of that. We'll see how that all pans out on there. Um, nothing else looks remarkable up here. All right, going on to the 10-speed trans real quick, okay? Standard carryover 10-speed trans. There is a special version for the uh, power boost models, the hybrid models. Okay, but otherwise the standard 10R80 transmission. The one nice feature I see in the 2021 models is of course they've, they've pulled the uh, trans cooler from right here, which you guys saw in my other video and everybody made a comment. Plastic pan, cooler right here, stuff's gonna hit it and take it out, take out the trans. Well, that cooler's gone now. This is all open right here, okay? Instead, the cooler's integrated to the side of the trans right here. So it's actually a heat exchanger. You can see it right there. Okay, so that's coolant and trans fluid going through it. And it'll, all the trans fluid stays here. There's no more trans cooler lines that head up front. Okay, so it all stays here within the heat exchanger in the trans. And these lines right here, these two lines right here, are just coolant lines. Okay, and those all lead up to uh, the engine cooling system up in the vehicle here. And this little cooling control valve controls uh, the flow going back there. So of course, we're gonna stagnate it to heat it up. And then we're of course gonna allow flow and heat exchange uh, once the trans gets warm, okay? So that's nice I and mean, that thing's way up in there and compact and out of the way, it's kind of nice, all right? 
Uh, the other thing I noticed, these cats on here are double cat design. See, they're separated like that. It's a huge, huge uh, cat on there. There's two small ones, uh, but the connection is huge on here. So they're obviously meant to uh, be one single unit that's separated on here. Uh, otherwise, the piping looks to be standard. Coming out of there. And you can see it's pretty open. I mean, look at this side of the engine. You know, you're adjusting the trans fluid and stuff like that. It's all open over here. Look at that. On a 3.5 EcoBoost, of course. All right. So otherwise, you know, this one has power running boards. It's all pretty standard fare. Uh, I think the new feature for this, this model year, I believe, is this little kick switch right here. Kick it and open and close it whenever you want. Um... Transfer case looks to be the standard transfer case, just the carryover design. Okay, there's two different versions. Uh, two speed, the torque on demand. All right, pretty standard. EBEP cans, they're pretty standard. Same thing, wide frame, steel frame on here, of course. This vehicle has the 36 gallon extended range fuel tank on here, which was offered in previous years. Nothing crazy about the exhaust system on here. It's nice and open, okay? When we get back here, things do get a little bit more interesting. So on this vehicle, it's a standard 9.75 rear axle, electronic locking uh, differential, which is indicated by the uh, locker right there, the connection right there for the locker, all right? Pretty darn standard. They do offer, which I've never heard of before, you know, there's semi-floats, there's full floating axle, well, there's something called a three-quarter floating axle, which I think some of the foreign car manufacturers use, Toyota maybe, I don't know, where there's actually an axle and hub and bearing built in back here, and then an internal seal for the uh, oil in there. And this vehicle does not have it, uh, but it is offered. Um, so that's interesting for higher payloads, I guess. Um... So this one's pretty standard, but it is totally different. The wheel ends on here. A lot cleaner design. I mean, look at the size of these bolts on here. Uh, of course, we have an electronic parking brake. They've offered that for a couple of years now. Uh, so nothing big there. The leaf springs, though. Standard leaf here. Okay, I guess it's be the helper right here. Um, it, it's totally different. So it's a standard thickness leaf. Uh, but the one down here, instead of like, two pieces down here uh two more leaves it's one thick one down here and this is the first year i've ever seen that uh this vehicle does have standard shocks they bolt in and look the same as they always did uh but certain models do have uh, uh active suspension shocks back here all right just try and make it more comfy and nice uh for different uh customers that are out there uh this vehicle, um, of course, it, it has it has the height sensor. You can see it right here. It has the height sensor on it for some reason, even though I don't have active suspension on here. So I'll have to read it up on that. Even the workshop manual is not uh, fully complete on here. So let's kind of go around and let you guys see all this stuff. Now, all these orange wires are high voltage wires um, for the power inverter. And there it goes up into the box and the side of the bed there. So this one has like the standard uh, power inverter on there. Uh, I don't know how many watts it is. I'll look into it. But that's why all these wires are orange on here. Just kind of walk around. The hitch on here. So everything's pretty darn standard underneath here. You know, I just wanted to give you guys a quick walk around, a couple of the changes I saw. And well, you know, it's all new technology. We'll see how it all pans out in the end. You know, what, what components are gonna wear. I'm really worried about these, uh, you know, being the first year in these these uh, DC motors inside of here, actuating the IWEs in there. I don't know. We'll see how well it works. Hopefully it works really well. And that problem is solved once and for all. All right, that's all for underneath the vehicle on this one right here. All right, so that's about it. I just wanted to give you guys my initial impressions of the 21 F-150. Um, I think...
for now because this video is getting too long already. Uh, we're actually going to do the driver assist functions in a separate video. They're pretty cool uh, and they deserve their own uh, dedicated video. Now in the future here, we're going to have a couple more videos coming out. Um, of course, there's a few things about this truck that just absolutely irks me. There's about five to ten things. So we're going to have a video in the future of all the things that irk me about this brand new truck. Uh, then we're also going to have a video in the fall when all that driver assist self-driving functions, the software update comes out uh, in the fall, which they could now call Blue Cruise. Um, and then about a year or so from now, once I get some miles in the truck, I get used to it and I feel out the quirks of the truck. Um, I'll do a, like a one year review video of it or whatever. Uh, but that's all for now. I want to give you guys a, a quick update on it and my initial impressions and all the cool new features on the new 2021 F-150. I'll catch you guys next time.